Amen. There's always something great about bells, isn't there? Our scripture passage from the prophet Isaiah this morning does a great job at invoking a sense of, of humility in us as we start off with how large and lofty and grand God is and how small and insignificant, woe is me, Isaiah feels in response in this vision. There are a lot of other details that we're not going to have time to get into this morning, such as the seraphim with the wings, what did they look like, or the live coal, or the significance of the hymn on God's robe. But I'll say if that interests you, I can't recommend enough our midweek Bible study where we have the time to delve in to those deeper details. What we're going to be focusing on this morning is two larger questions that this passage points us towards. How does God call us? And who does God call? In Scripture, we see a lot of different ways that God calls. We have a popular one here with Isaiah having either a dream or a vision of seeing God. We have Joseph, who was a dreamer. We have Mary, who was visited in a dream. There is a long history of God appearing in dreams. Not just in Scripture, but if you look at other religions or cultures around the world, saying having dreams or visions, sometimes aided even by different substances, is a common religious or spiritual practice. But I'd say that's not a very common Presbyterian I can tell you that I've never had a dream where I felt like that was God speaking to me in that dream or that vision. I don't know if that's because God never has, or if that's because if God did, I ignored it. Because that's not how I know God to speak. Not that God can't, but that's not the lens that I approach it. We also commonly have people being called, and again, throughout Scripture, by God speaking through other people. Whether it's the prophets or King David being approached, we hear voices through other human beings saying, I see something in you. I see a gift or a talent or an ability, or I see a bright future for you. We hear that and we hear God speaking through others. Yet we also have in scripture, like with Samuel, of simply hearing a voice. A voice in the night. I have two personal call stories, if you will. Or perhaps one story kind of split into two parts. My story starts, I was a high school student, a teenager. In my second year at the Logos Youth Camp in Estes Park, Colorado. It was my second year and I learned a lot from the first year. And the main thing I learned from the first year is that if you're going to be at a YMCA campground where there are four bunk beds and then a larger bed where there is a, 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 a male room leader, so to speak, that between yourself and four other people, you will have at least one person who snores. Guaranteed. So I learned after the first week of not being able to sleep after that first year, the second year, I wanted to come back prepared. So I brought my brand new uh, Sony Walkman CD player and my big over-the-ear headphones, and my CD case. And it was one night when I was listening to that music, the only way I can describe it is I heard a voice that was inside me, but not my own, telling me to go to seminary. And I can tell you that it meant something to me, as I have kept that CD case. You see where this is going? I have kept that CD player, and I have kept that CD. Only rock and roll, 1965 to 1969, <laughs> with hits such as Happy Together, Mr. Tambourine Man, Windy, Eli's Coming, California Dreamin', Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, and a few others. And having this experience and at a, an influential time in my life, perhaps you may think rightfully so that I would have went and told everybody. I told nobody. 
You might have think maybe I went and that's when I decided I was going to go to seminary and change my life course. No. I decided to ignore it. And I think that is why, perhaps, that I heard that voice, that I had that experience that I can't explain or prove to anybody. Because I think I was dense enough that I needed that to wake up. And it didn't work. So I stayed on my own career track that I wanted, doing debate in high school, going to college to major in political science. Can you guess what career track I wanted to be on? I wanted to be a lawyer. Because I grew up saying, get good grades, or hearing, get good grades, be a doctor or a lawyer, and I don't like other people's blood. So I was going to be a lawyer. So fast forward to my junior, the summer after my junior year in college and undergrad. So we're five, six years later. During a worship service at my home church that had a balcony like this, but it was a U-shaped balcony that went to the back and then around to the sides. And my family, we are balcony people. So I am with you up there in the balcony. Hey, they, if you can't see up here, they all, they all li lifted their hand like solidarity. And it was a U-shaped balcony. And if we were in that church, I was sitting right up there. And it was during the pastoral's prayer. And our pastor, I love him to death, but his prayers were four to five minutes. As a teenager, I would time them on my watch. But it was during one of those prayers that I heard the voice again. No one else heard it, but it was inside me, but it did not feel like it was my own, saying, I'm serious, you're going to seminary. And I was scared to death. And I said, okay. And I literally stopped looking at law schools and started looking at seminary that summer. And I've been able to talk to other pastors as we'll sometimes share, you know, how did you get into ministry? I'm always a little torn on how much of those stories I share. Partly because I don't know how common of an experience it is. But partly I think it shows that, man, I had to hear it twice to be able to listen. And there are still things that I struggle with, as, as we all do. But it shows that God is able to speak to us in so many different ways. And if we look at our Presbyterian polity, what does a call look like? If we go back to the beginning of the Presbyterian church to John Calvin, he says a call has to have two things to it. A call has to have internal and external. And you have to have the internal first. And the internal, whether it is an experience or a sense perhaps if you listen better than I did, especially when I was younger... A feeling that leading, that guidance, that call, that spirit moving. Then you say, okay, internally I'm feeling something. But then the external is you need others to be able to verify. Say, I see that in you too. I also witness that. So we look at both sides of this coin as a church body and as individuals. We have to be able to listen to hear the different ways God could be calling us something internally. And to be able to listen to others who are affirming those gifts in us. And we also likewise need to be affirming those gifts in others. Whenever we see and whenever we witness them. So that's one little bit of how God calls. Who does God call? If I say who does God call, and we're being honest... I know I'm certainly included in this. At some point, maybe our first internal response is, who does God call? Please not me. Please not me. Who's serving on nominating committee this year? I'm going to screen their calls. Please not me. So in the Presbyterian church, and we're not alone in this, but we subscribe to a theology, the priesthood of all believers. Meaning that there is nothing that special about what I do. The only things I really can do that no one else is really supposed to do is the sacraments, baptism, and communion. Really everything else I do, it, it's not relegated to only clergy. Anybody in the church is able to do it. I don't have a secret hotline that I can call God and ask God to change the weather to make it great for a church picnic. I don't have 
any other ability to, to read Scripture differently or to pray differently. If anything, I may have more practice at it. But that's it. So who does God call? Whoever God wants to. And the priesthood of all believers speak that God is able to call pretty much anyone or everyone to any and everything. And if you ask John Calvin, who does God call? Calvin would have said God calls everyone for the same purpose. To glorify God. In whatever we do, in how we live, in how we act and respond and think and pray and listen, it is all to glorify God. If you look at the greater catechism, did anyone here ever have to memorize answers to a catechism growing up? Were you, did you all grow up Catholic? Is that probably why it was? Because that's, that, right? Well, we have the catechism in our book of confessions as well, but we usually don't have to memorize it, usually in Presbyterian circles. But what's, what's the purpose of man? The chief purpose of man is to glorify God. That's why we're here. So that's how John Calvin would respond. And there are a lot of different ways that we can do that. Part of that we're looking at today with our congregational meeting to elect officers. For those to be ordained as ruling elders, serve on session, or ordained as deacons, or to serve on nominating committee for next year. Part of the way we do that, looking at Stewardship Sunday, is who is invited and able to be a part of, of the ministry here, of what God is building, of how we are joining together, and it's the priesthood of all believers. It's everyone. And it's us needing to take a moment to say, maybe I need a moment of silence in my life to be able to listen to how God is calling me. Maybe when I see God calling someone else, when I see a gift, a talent, an ability think, do I say something or do I stay quiet? Do I write that note? Do I send that text? Or do I just go, oh, they know. They already know. They may not. Or they may be waiting for that external voice to affirm what they're internally feeling. I know we can do that because I've seen it. And I've seen how loving and warm and supportive we are as a church. So I'm going to encourage you to keep going. And to perhaps even go one step further. Let us be a place where we are continually lifting each other up. Showing the same love and support and affirmation in a world where we're constantly being beat down. Let us be the oasis that God is calling us to be. To be able to step forward and say, here we are. Send us. Amen.